I'm standing between the two versions of Leonardo's great painting, the version of the rocks, an extraordinary privilege because not even Leonardo saw these great paintings together and they've never been exhibited alongside one another before. This is a central room of the National Gallery's exhibition, Leonardo da Vinci, Painter at the Court of Milan. It's the old master exhibition of the century and a major diplomatic coup with eight paintings. It reunites more than half of Leonardo's surviving oeuvre as a painter. We have chosen not to show them side by side, but facing each other. So it's more than just a spot the differences, but um, you can, you're meant to explore the pictures um, individually. You're meant to spend a bit of time in front of each individually, as well as look at them together. It was a very emotional moment for all of us when, when it was unpacked last week, um, for the first time seen together. The first version is the first picture he paints when he comes to Milan. And our version, the second version, um, uh, he's working on, it's one of the last pictures he's working on. So in that room, you can actually, between these two pictures, the tension that is between them um, is the magic. That, that's exactly what um, um, encapsulates, as it were, the, his, uh, his development. The story starts here with this portrait, the musician. We see straight away from the hint of movement about the lips and because he's holding a song sheet that this young man has just finished singing. Now, Leonardo's portraits have always been disputed, but I'm sure the curator of this show, Luke Sison, is right that so many features of this one show it to be only Leonardo. The moist, spherical eyes, the rippling curls, the obsession with the fall of light, that whiff of melancholy, but most of all the movement, this guy has just turned to look at us. Renaissance portraits before Leonardo were very closely representational, but static. And what Leonardo gives us here in that turn of movement is a sentient, emotional being. Soon afterwards, Leonardo painted what is probably the greatest portrait of his career after the Mona Lisa. This is Cecilia Gallerani. It's also known as the Lady with the Ermine, and it's exceptionally borrowed here from Krakow. Cecilia was the 15-year-old mistress of Leonardo's patron, Ludovico Sforza. And that status, not that of a bride, liberated Leonardo to make this very radical portrayal. It's that, it's that twist of movement which absolutely engages us, as does, of course, the Mona Lisa half-smile and the eyes focused, we, we don't know what on. And the extraordinary thing about this portrait is that every time you come back to it, Cecilia looks different. Now she's distant, now she's warm, now she's receptive, now she's self-contained. And really that elusiveness is what makes this such a great painting. That sort of naturalism, of course, wouldn't work for a religious painting. And there's a lovely juxtaposition here, this great Madonna Lita from St. Petersburg with a life drawing of a stunning model. And you see at once how it's been transmuted here, the fake features regularized and made ideal, almost to geometric perfection in the finished painting. brings us back to the core of the show, the version of the rocks, where everything turns on that balance between the idealised and the imaginative, that sense of inner life that we felt in Cecilia, and the naturalistic. You have to imagine this work in the context for which it was intended, which was the candlelit chapel of the Confernity of the Immaculate Conception, which would have made yet more mysterious the way that emerges from the shadow of painted rock and that carved gilt frame, a pyramid of four figures, Mary with her arm cradling John the Baptist and her other hand extended to hover protectively over the baby Jesus and attended by this diaphanous angel who's surely one of the most beautiful creations in all of art. This is the Louvre's version. It's more meticulous, it's more delicate, it's earlier. <laughs> The national version is more sculptural, more monumental, and it sparkles because it's just been cleaned. But what they share is this tremendous, subtle tonal unity, the mellowed colours, and that compositional centre, Mary tending towards the children. And that action is enhanced by the diagonal of her cloak and the crumpled golden folds. It's dynamic, it's as if she's alive, but it's also frozen in time by art. It's real, but it's ethereal. And that's really Leonardo's unique effect, the human and the spiritual.